안녕하세요. 마스터 코스를 진행하고 있는 K 치과 강충규 원장입니다. Greetings. I am Dr. Kang Chung-gyu, K Dental Office, a lecturer in Master Course. Today, I'm going to talk about implant placement location, direction, and depth determination. When we establish an implant treatment plan, we need to consider several factors. We need to think about diameters and the length of implants and how many implants, whether we will have one surgery or two surgeries. The most important thing is the appropriate placement positions, direction, and depth. Because when it comes to implants, fabrication of prosthesis is the most important thing. We need to have a proper direction and depth of implants for proper prosthetics. Initial panorama picture. As you can see, there is some awkwardness. It's too short in terms of implant distance, and they are not in parallel. This will lead to stability problem of prosthesis later. The emergence profile would be different from that of natural tooth, so not ideal prosthesis can be fabricated. When placing two implants, they are converging with each other and abutments are colliding, interfering with each other, so it will hamper stable prosthesis. As you can see, these two abutments are coming up and they overlap with each other and a space was required between them, and the prosthesis kept falling off. So three unit bridge was made, including the mesial tooth, and it caused a problem in the adjacent natural tooth. So eventually these two were removed, and uh, implants were placed again in proper positions. As you can see, when you fabricate implant the prosthesis, implant needs to be placed at the center of prosthesis. When you place multiple implants, they need to be placed in parallel as much as possible. When implants are placed properly considering the locations and direction of a placement, it can lead to stable prosthesis. Here comes the important terminology, top-down treatment of planning. The superstructure is given priority, so it is a top-down planning. It means for ideal tooth form, crowns are planned first, and according to the plan, the locations and forms, implants are placed through surgery. That means for ideal prosthesis, implants need to be placed in proper locations. If you look at here, number 47 implant, is based on top-down treatment planning. But this one is placed a little bit distally, so it is not properly following top-down treatment planning. If you compare these two, the implant was placed at the center of prosthesis that facilitates the later retrievability of implant. And if it is not in proper location, it can cause biomechanical problem and cantilever force can be loaded. So that is leading to an ideal emergence profile. And the food retention and soft tissue irritation can occur and improper occlusion may happen. So when we place implants, it should be based on top-down treatment planning. If you look at another case here, when implants were placed, the directions are not proper. So this is the resultant prosthesis. Here, food retention can occur and uh, the patient will complain. And the cantilever force is applied in this design, which is hampering the stable maintenance of prosthesis. Here, before and after the treatment, at the center of prosthesis, implants were placed based on the top-down treatment planning. 
So for ideal emergence of prosthesis, implants need to be positioned properly. For this type of prosthesis, we need to make an effort when we place implants. Top-down treatment planning can be facilitated by these kits, one guide kit, smart guide kit, and parallel guide kit. One guide kit. It is based on CT to place implants in ideal location and depth. Next, smart guide kit. Impression is taken and on the gypsum model, a template can be made faster and economically. Ideal implant placement can be facilitated using the kit. Parallel guide kit. It is also called a positioning guide kit. A single guide like this or bridge guide can be used. The placement path and locations can be facilitated using this parallel guide kit. Let me talk about how to set placement locations. Mesial distally, we need to consider the distance and buccolingually positioning should be made. First, mesial distal location of an implant it should be located at the very center of final restoration. The distance between a natural tooth and implant should be at least 1.5 millimeters, and between two implants, at least a three millimeter distance should be ensured. Mesodistal location. Implant should be positioned at the center of final restoration. As you can see, it is located at the center of the restoration. That is the positioning of an implant. Many implants are planned, and after the placement, they are all at the center of the restorations in terms of the mesodistal location. Here, Number 26 and 7, they failed, so they are retrieved, and the distance between the two implants are too close, so in the second surgery, a minimum of 3 millimeter distance is ensured. The emergence profile looks ideal, and the self-cleansing in this area can be helped, so 3 millimeters at minimum distance between two implants should be ensured. The most challenging area is the mesodistal position in the most posterior tooth. The width of the final prosthesis is about 10 millimeters, so the center is 5 millimeters from the border. The ideal implant position should be 5 millimeters from the adjacent natural tooth. In the most posterior tooth, this is a stable position of at the center. This is distally positioned, and this is mesially positioned prosthesis. So mesial distally, in the most posterior tooth, the position is not good. So it is distally and mesially positioned. So unideal emergence profile and the prosthesis form is observed here. So as much as possible, at the center of the prosthesis implant should be positioned. Up to now, I have talked about mesiodistal position. Now, buccolingual position. It should be at the center of the buccolingual line connecting the adjacent teeth. You also need to check whether it is normal dentition and the occlusion with the opposing jaw. You also need to check whether there is sufficient bone on the buccal side of virtual entry point of implant. The bone around the implant needs to be preserved after the placement. In terms of buccolingual position, in the anterior region, the labial bone width should be 2 millimeters or more. And on the palatal side, it should be 1 millimeter or more. That is the buccolingual position. In the posterior region, on the buccal side, 1.5 millimeter at minimum. 
and at least one millimeter on the lingual side. At least, buccolingually, one millimeter or more bone is required for stable implant. So buccolingually, after placing an implant, one millimeter or more is required. Next, direction of placement. Basically, it should be consistent with the tooth axis of natural teeth. So considering the placement direction, we can think about mesiodistal and the buccolingual directions. First, mesiodistal direction. If the axis of natural teeth is normal, an implant should follow the mesiodistal axis of a natural tooth. The center of implant in the mandible should be directed toward the interdental area of the upper teeth. The center of the upper implant should be toward the interdental area of the lower natural teeth. If the direction is normal, just like the axis of natural teeth, visual teething needs to be provided. That is very important. So in the second premolar position of lower jaw, this implant is mesially tilted and the uh, implant is at the center of prosthesis and there's no mesial tilting but distal tilting in this implant so distally the hole is positioned in the prosthesis so just like natural teeth axis mesial tilting is important for ideal prosthesis Lingually, the extension of implant axis should be toward the functional cusp of opposing tooth. The direction of the maxillary posterior implant should be toward the functional cusp or buccal cusp of the lower posterior tooth. And when we place an implant in the posterior of mandible, it should be directed toward the palatal cusp, the functional cusp of upper posterior tooth. If you look at here, an implant is placed in the maxilla and it is a toward the buccal cusp of lower posterior. And if an implant is placed in the mandible, it is toward the palatal cusp of the upper tooth. This is a case where placement and direction is amended. Implants are placed at number 26. The direction of implant needs to be distally adjusted and the mesial tilting needs to be provided. So when you adjust the direction of a placed implant for the final drilling, for proper primary stability, one size under drilling is required. As the drilling is finished, and when you want to adjust the direction, if you use the same drill, the space would get bigger and primary stability cannot be obtained. Therefore, one size under drilling needs to be done, so the direction is changed. Uh, for more ideal implant prosthesis. In this case, as you can see, it is visually placed and um, there is a gap as it is distally changed. By changing the path of the implant, more ideal prosthesis like this was fabricated. One more thing, in the posterior region in the mandible, when the direction of an implant placement is not proper, it can cause lingual wall perforation. Lingual artery, submentalis artery can be invaded, leading to injury. So, in the lower posterior region, we need to be careful not to make lingual wall perforation. So this is the result and it was found later and uh, the surgery was done again to correct the direction of the implant placement. In the lower posterior region, lingual perforation can occur. If you look at this case, could we have 
done something to avoid the situation. Here, outer side, there's cortical bone and cancellous bone, and and there is cortical bone here. After penetrating into the cortical bone, and you can feel the resistance when it faces cortical bone again, and um, this makes you think. I may make a perforation. So as you drill into the bone and feel the resistance, you should not go through the bone by applying higher force. It may lead to perforation. So if you are suspicious of the perforation, even just a little bit before inserting implant, you need to check the situation using the depth gauge. So before placing an implant, you can check the situation using the depth gauge to avoid a situation like this. Next, depth of placement. The depth, whatever the type of implant, it should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter below bone right after the placement or after the delivery of prosthesis, the marginal loss can be accommodated as the rough surface is below the bone. So 0.5 to 1 millimeter below bone is the meaningful depth of placement. After the placement, rough surface is submerged in the bone, that is the depth of placement. When we consider placement depth, we need to consider the factor of biologic width. It is the thickness of soft tissue, the barrier against the invasion of external elements. Around an implant, 3 millimeters or more biologic width is required. In terms of placement depth, from the top of the implant, 3 millimeters of biologic width is required. And after that, for the retention of prosthesis, at least 4 millimeter of abutment length is required. And considering at least 1 millimeter occlusal thickness of prosthesis, if you add the three numbers, 8 millimeter space is required. So this is considered in determining the depth of placement. In addition, for natural emergence profile, approximately 8 millimeter space is required. As you know, emergence profile is the starting form of prosthesis at the gingival sulcus, a form of prosthesis transitioning from subgingival to supragingival. 8 millimeter space, how can we ensure the depth? To check the depth, we can use the length of the mount. It is exactly 8 millimeter long. After the placement at occlusion, you can check whether 8 millimeters is available. It's less than 8 millimeters, then 8 millimeter space is not secured. So if it is less than 8 millimeters, an implant should be placed a little bit deeper to ensure 8 millimeter of space. Let's look at the checking sequence of placement depth. The patient visited 7 months post-extraction. 5 by 11.5 implant is planned and the implant was placed. When there is sufficient bone below, the depth can be more easily controlled using one size longer, the 13 millimeter drill. As you can see, after the placement of an implant, the rough surface is checked in the boccoli and lingually it is checked again whether a rough surface is submerged and lastly at occlusion. The mount is checked whether 8 millimeter space is secured. So X-ray. Finally, after removing the mount, using a fixture driver, 0.5 to 1 millimeter below bone, the implant should be located. 
and uh, if there's gap, GBR is conducted and sutured before finishing the surgery. From time to time, the space is not really available in the lower, most posterior region. So this is a situation that, that can occur in the most posterior region in the mandible. Then a little deeper placement can ensure better spacing. Up to now, I have talked about placement direction, position, and depth, and what need to be considered for those. Once implant is placed, we cannot adjust the direction. So from the planning stage, we need to ensure the depth, the location, and path of an implant to place an implant that will be very important for future prosthesis in terms of its stability. More details will be provided in an offline lecture. Thank you for your attention.